Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, bringing you a pretty special weapon guide today, as I'm going to be going over the legendary Peacekeeper in Battlefield 1, the most powerful revolver in the game that's sometimes considered to be the greatest handgun ever made. So the Peacekeeper, which was actually nicknamed the Peacemaker in real life, was the Colt Single Action Army, a very powerful six-shooter that fired the .45 Colt cartridge. Since its creation in 1873, the gun became a true icon of the American frontier and, well, the Wild West, often being associated with cowboys, outlaws and famous gunslingers that were around in the late 19th century. Although the single action army was a six-shooter, quite a lot of its wielders tended to load the gun up with just five shots at a time, with the hammer resting down on an empty chamber, as this would have been a much safer way to carry it due to the fact that the revolver didn't have a firing pin block. So if the gun was dropped on the floor, or if the hammer was accidentally smacked whilst the round was in the chamber, well this could have caused it to go off, potentially putting a pretty big hole into something or someone that probably didn't deserve it. The Peacemaker was definitely a symbol of power in the Old West, but despite being a hard-hitting weapon, the gun wasn't without its flaws. The single action army used a bit of a finicky reloading procedure, especially when compared to top break revolvers like the Smith & Wesson No. 3 and the fact that the gun used a single action mechanism where the user had to manually cock the hammer after every shot meant that the gun couldn't really fire very fast, unless of course you were fanning the hammer. Though it was still an extremely popular and well received revolver nevertheless, being a durable and sturdy piece of American weaponry has gone down in history as a timeless classic. Since the gun was made in 1873, the Colt Single Action Army was made in a pretty wide variety of variants, models and sizes. The original first generation cavalry model had a pretty long barrel length of about 7.5 inches, though with the gun being such a huge success when it first came out, other versions with shorter barrels and calibre types were also manufactured too, like the civilian friendly gunfighter model along with the artillery model, both of which functioning in the very same way as the standard version, thus keeping the single action army's robust image intact. Now not only did Colt's trusty Peacemaker revolver first appear in the early 1870s, but so did another weapon that was also quite popular with cowboys and settlers of the West, the Winchester Model 1873 Lever Action Rifle, born in the USA in the very same year, another gun that also apparently won in the West too. The big problem was it fired a different cartridge to the single action army, so carrying a load of different bullets compatible for different firearms wouldn't have exactly been very convenient. But not to worry, because a few years later, a Peacemaker model was made compatible with the Winchester Round, called the Colt Frontier Six Shooter. Just when Colt was about to leave the single action army in the past after the Second World War, movies and television brought attention to the revolver once again, with the weapon featuring in a lot of things with cowboys and western themes. This led to a second generation of Peacemakers in 1956, along with a third generation model 20 years later in 1976. And despite being such a historical piece of technology, the gun still lives on today as an icon of Western arms. Now normally this is the part where I'd quickly run over the stuff you need to do to unlock the weapon being reviewed, but the Peacekeeper is a different kind of beast that requires you to spend tons of hours grinding through easter eggs, solving challenges and following walkthroughs. Definitely not the sort of thing I can run over in a weapon guide. I can safely say that it's the hardest gun to unlock in Battlefield 1 and it might cause some of you to lose your minds. It's a bloody tricky weapon to get hold of, but if you're up for the challenge, I'll give you a heads up on the easter eggs that need to be solved. You'll first need to complete all of the Master Man related easter eggs, which include the dog tags A Beginning, A Conflict and An Omen. You'll also need to complete the An Escalation easter egg to acquire that cool looking M1917 skin, and then you'll need to get both the Angel Sighting and Belly of the Beast dog tags by completing even more easter eggs. And then last of all, you'll have to complete, yep, another easter egg on Passchendaele to eventually find the Peacekeeper revolver at the end of a creepy tunnel. I'd definitely suggest following a guide for these challenges to let you know how to work out the next step, and I'll stick a link in the description below to a website I found to be quite helpful. If you've got a lot of patience and you're up for working out a bunch of puzzles, unlocking the Peacekeeper gives you a pretty big sense of accomplishment at the end. Though be warned, it will take some time, dedication and perseverance, and it's definitely not the sort of thing the average gamer will be able to get through. But anyway, let's get on to all the stuff about how the gun actually performs in Battlefield 1, starting off with the weapon's power output. The Peacekeeper is in fact the strongest revolver in the game, with its shots being able to punch right the way through your enemies with tremendous force dealing the new highest maximum revolver damage of 60 up to 40 meters. The gasser might be able to hold on to its maximum damage for a longer distance, but because the Peacekeeper deals more raw damage in general, 
This not only allows it to kill weakened enemies more reliably up close, but it also means that you'll be able to wipe the smile off the face of your enemy with a well-played shot to the head too. As it's the only revolver in the game that can put a player down up close with a single headshot, giving the Obrez a run for its money when it comes to snappy kills in CQC. Of course, headshots aren't always the easiest things to pull off in frantic close-range gunfights, and so you'll usually need to plant two rounds into your opponent to put them down, up to the range of 22 metres, which is the same as the gasser. But the single action army is capable of dealing more damage further away too, having the minimum damage value of 30 at 38 metres and beyond, basically meaning it can kill an enemy in just 2 to 4 rounds overall, giving it some brutal stopping power over all ranges. The Peacekeeper's a very unique revolver, in the sense that it's actually got two rates of fire. If you aim down the gun sights, you'll have to manually cock the hammer back after each shot, because it's a single action revolver, and this makes the fire rate slower than average. The Peacekeeper can only fire at the rate of 90 RPM in ADS, which is over twice as quick as the Obrez pistol, but still a pretty sluggish speed when compared to the other revolvers and semi-automatic pistols. So despite having a two bullet kill up close, it's got a pretty slow time to kill when you're lining up shots accurately with the weapon sights. But if you shoot from the hip, you'll be able to fan the hammer like a crazed outlaw, and increase that fire rate by 2.5 times at the rate of 224 RPM, nicely matching up with the Badeo 1889 and the Auto Revolver, with the ability to fire a flurry of shots by simply holding down the fire button, a bit like with the Gasser. Of course, you're not going to have the same level of precision, but you'll dramatically speed up those kill times and make the Peacekeeper a much more effective CQC weapon by doing so. And with the gasser having a slower fire rate of 180 RPM, but having the same kind of two hit kill distance, this can often give the Peacekeeper a slight advantage, being able to take players down a bit faster over those closer ranges. Unfortunately, the Peacekeeper is the slowest deploying sidearm of the whole bunch, taking almost a whole second to whip out and ready up to fire, and this can have a dramatic effect on its ability to dish out that damage quickly. Despite having some really strong power and competitive kill times, the gun's deploy time can often let it down a bit in the heat of battle. And this is definitely something that you need to take into consideration if you're choosing to use it as a tool for finishing weakened players off with, being a weapon that generally works better on its own, rather than in combination with primary weapons. Because you're blasting out high-powered rounds, capable of inflicting lots of damage very quickly, this is going to cause the gun's barrel to swing upwards a bit more than you'd probably feel comfortable with. Just like with the gasser, the Peacekeeper's got a really heavy amount of vertical recoil, causing the gun to bounce upwards at 6 degrees and horizontally with left and rightwards values of 1, meaning it's going to be a fairly hard weapon to control, having one of the most violent kick patterns of all the revolvers. Along with its recoil figures, the Peacekeeper's pretty much got identical spread stats as the gasser, and just like the other secondary weapons, it shares the same hipfire stats too. But with the other revolvers having less recoil, making them feel more manageable to use, and with the gasser firing a tad slower during hipfire, this can often make the Peacekeeper's kick seem a bit more erratic, as if you're firing at the full fat 224 RPM, you're going to have to contend with that recoil more, with there being less time for the recoil to reset to gain accuracy back for your next shot. If you're wasting someone away at point blank range, then this isn't really a massive issue, but the further away your opponent is, the less effective spam firing is going to be and so you might need to pace your shots out a bit to ensure your bullets are more likely to land, which slightly increases the weapon's time to kill and makes you a more vulnerable target in a firefight. This is where aiming down those sights comes in handy, as although you'll be shooting a lot slower, you'll often be able to land more shots bang on target, so in a way it can often be a tactical decision to risk hip firing at a faster rate with lower accuracy, or choose to aim down sights to gain more precision at the expense of shooting a bit slower. The Peacekeeper, just like quite a lot of the other revolvers, holds a total of 6 rounds at a time, and the only other revolver to contain more ammunition is the Nagant M1895, though the added power that the Peacekeeper has per shot more than makes up for its inability to hold an extra cartridge, as 6 rounds is more than enough to kill anything that moves, apart from maybe a tank. Though the single action army is another gate loaded revolver, unlike the quicker reloading top break guns like the Number 3 and the Webleys. So unfortunately, it's going to take a fairly long time to replace that lost ammo to get back into the fight once that cylinder runs dry. The less rounds you need to replace, the less time it's going to take, with the gun typically taking between about 4.1 to 8.6 seconds to slot in another 1 to 5 rounds. 
though if you spend all six of those bullets, an empty reload is going to take a similar time to if you were reloading just two bullets back into the gun at 6.9 seconds. Which isn't exactly super swift, but still a tad quicker than if you were to reload with one round still left over in the chamber. Because you're a bit of a fancy pants and like to swing that gun around, this increases the pre-reload delay and basically makes it a less effective weapon for performing reload cancels. Not really the best thing if you like to use reload cancelling techniques to your advantage. And in a way, this is another small flaw with the Peacekeeper's practicality in a competitive sense. Though the revolver is still very usable, so long as you take this extra time into account and learn to reload whenever it's safe to do so. So anyway, in conclusion, the Peacekeeper is a very unique revolver that definitely stands out from the crowd. Other than having a lot of different stats to separate it from the other sidearms, it also functions in alternate ways depending on how you choose to use it too. Being able to trade accuracy for fire rate on the go by simply aiming down the sights or fanning the hammer. Those .45 Colt rounds are nasty things to get hit by, dealing the heaviest damage out of all of the revolvers, and this gives it a bit more range than a lot of the others, allowing it to perform pretty well over most distances. It can knock off decent chunks of health to finish off a weakened enemy, and it's capable of blitzing through close range targets at a rapid rate, due to it firing as fast as the auto revolver, yet killing in the same number of bullets as the gasser in CQC. Though despite having a ferocious shot and potentially nippy kill times, the Peacekeeper does have a few problems that prevents it from being a truly unstoppable killing machine. It might be the greatest handgun ever made from a damage point of view, but it's definitely not the most reliable. The single action army's got the slowest deploy time of all the secondary weapons, so it's not a fantastic emergency gun for whipping out as a finishing off tool, and it's a pretty slow revolver to reload, putting you in more vulnerable positions when you're all out of ammo. It also requires a bit of skill and patience to master its recoil pattern too, as you might be able to deal lots of damage very quickly, but you'll need to tame the beast first. The gun kicks like crazy whenever you pull down the trigger, and this can throw your aim off and cause you to miss shots, further increasing that kill time and leaving you open for attack. It's up to you to decide whether it's worth sacrificing that quicker fire rate for higher precision, as firing from the hip can be really effective up close, but much harder to control and land shots the further away your opponent is. Overall, the Peacekeeper's got some strong positive and negative factors, allowing it to wipe players out quickly, but not necessarily easily or reliably all the time. It's got a lot of flair and feels like a really cool gun to use, but it's far from perfect and can be outmatched in several situations by other sidearms, down to them being more accurate, reloading faster and having quicker deploy times. It might be a bit of a pain in the arse to get hold of, but the Peacekeeper's still got reasons to be unlocked and used for anyone who's up for a bit of a challenge. It's one of the deadliest sidearms in the game, making it a very effective gun, but not always the most dependable or versatile. So that's it for another weapon guide, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give me a like if you did, and subscribe for more Battlefield content coming soon in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next episode.